All right, welcome back. This is Democracy Day News Hub special. We still have with us in our Lagos studio, uh, Comrade Joseph Eva, who is a social activist. Now we are moving our attention to the heroes of June 12 uh, struggle. Uh, we know a lot of notable names who laid down their lives. Uh, some are still alive, though, uh, for the struggle of June 12, uh, Democracy Day, uh, which has been tagged or labeled the freest and fairest election Nigeria has ever had since the return of democracy. But before we begin this discussion, let's take a listen to a report done by our senior correspondent, uh, Lawrence Omoite, and we'll be right back to begin our, our conversation. The June 12 phenomenon is a signpost of those who defied the culture of silence, a culture of conspiracy against a significant point in the nation's history. It has continued to be a reminder of how determined society persisted in resisting an attempt to subjugate the collective will of the people. So many episodes of the June 12 battles are replete in the pages of Nigeria's history. How the battles were executed by the generals and foot soldiers who fought on the streets and in the trenches. But today, only their memories are alive in the hearts of citizens as the nation relieves their contributions. Moshud Kashimawu or Lawale Abiola was the symbol of the June 12 struggle after the annulment of the election in 1993. The acclaimed winner not only eventually paid the supreme price, his business concerns and family were worse hit. I will fight for peace. I will, I will get peace. But you see, we do not want the peace of a graveyard. Kodira Tabiola, one of the wives, became the symbol of the struggle, leading protests and mobilizing support for the actualization of June 12. She was, however, killed on the streets of Lagos in the early hours of June 4, 1996. She was one of the first casualties of the struggle. Lawyer and human rights activist Gani Faemi, another June 12 general, led a formidable campaign on the streets and in the courtroom. For those who were not born before then, and for those who died trying to ensure that June 12 was entrenched, it shows that he appreciates the, the loss of lives, all those who have died, and that um, we must reason that way before we move on. Otherwise, nothing will be achieved. Another hero of June 12, a soldier of the struggle, Chima Ubani, rallied many human rights groups during the struggle for the validation of the mandate given to Chief M.K. Abiola. Bamidele Aturu made a strong showing during the June 12 days. His unwavering commitment to the struggle would remain indelible in the annals of Nigerian history. It is doubtful if any historical attempt can capture every contribution of thousands of participants in the June 12 struggle, especially those who have departed. The foot soldiers, Anonymous and unsung, who were cut short, mostly in their prime. Sadly, this group may only just make a footnote in the story of June 12, while the privileged few will be accorded a prominent space by posterity. Lawrence Moite, STV News. All right, welcome back to the program. That was Lawrence's report uh, based on the heroes of June 12. He mentioned uh, Kudirata Biola, Chima Ubani, Bami Deleaturu, amongst others. Uh, some are still living with us and some have gone to the great beyond. But uh, we are looking at these heroes and maybe lessons we can learn from these heroes. Uh, between 1993 and today is 26 years, so it means that uh, someone who was born in 1993 might just have an inkling on what went down in, in the country uh, in the past, in the last 26 years. But we've been joined by another guest in our Port Harcourt studio. We have Barista Edwin Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan is a lecturer of law, River State University, and also a public affairs analyst. You're welcome to the program. All right. All right, let's begin with you, uh, Thank Barista. Thank you very much. Let's begin with you, Barista Jonathan. Now, many people have said that the annulment of June 12 election forced yeah. uh, the late Kudirata June Biola 12, uh, into pro-democracy. Yeah. Okay. 
it made her to also develop a, uh, a steely determination that dared military uh, bullets. Now, how would you describe that kind of leadership that we saw from the late Kudirat Abiola, wife of MKO Abiola? <coughs> Yes, thank you very much for having me. It's a real privilege to discuss June 12, particularly in this perspective of the heroes of June 12. Indeed, Kudirat Abiola, you know, occupies a golden page in the history of this nation. For the very first time, a woman came out of the normal limitations and restrictions that the African tradition gives to women and decided to stand for the truth speak the truth, and of course, pay the supreme price for the truth. My salute goes to Kudirat Abiola in a very, very special way. And I want to say with every sense of responsibility that if we can have more women break from the cocoon of the African tradition and embrace politics in this dimension, the politics of the truth, the politics driven by the interests of the Nigerian people, Politics that has nothing to do with tribalism or tribal sentiments. Politics that goes beyond self. Kudirat Abiola was not begging for food. She was married to a very wealthy man, one of the wealthiest men at that time in, in, in our country, Nigeria. So she was not looking for bread to put on her table. She was not looking for celebrity status. She was married to, she was on her own right, a celebrity. So the point here is that this woman put her life on the line for the nation. And uh, I would urge the federal government, beyond celebrating Abiola, which we are doing today, in, in, you know, in the true sense of the word, by making today Democracy Day, we are actually celebrating the price that Abiola paid. People like Kudrak Abiola, Kudrak Abiola, should have a prominent page in the history of this nation. Whatever it is, maybe a national monument or street should be named after her. This is the way that we can deepen our sense of reward and commitment to that which she stands for. She's a great woman. She will continue to be remembered by this country and by this nation. And she will continue to stand as a symbol of courage and justice in this nation. So I celebrate her. She's a great woman. And women who are in politics today should learn from that and know that politics that we develop a nation is not the politics where everybody says yes, because the leader said yes, and that yes is not very convenient yes, not a people-driven yes. So we must all say yes, because uh, we don't want to be on your position. So I celebrate good like Abiola, and I ask, I urge Nigerians, wherever you are, to breathe a prayer for her soul to rest, and then to continue to, this legacy must continue to be discussed everywhere, this conversation about the price that she must continue in small meetings, in large meetings, to, to, to let us know that the truth will always prevail over falsehood. That light will always prevail over darkness. She stood for light. She stood for courage. She stood for the fact that the Nigerian woman has come of age and her responsibility, her duties has, is, has now gone beyond the kitchen and the other room, as some people said. So Nigerian women must embrace, look at the quality and what Kudirat Abiola stands for and continue to drive it for the good of this nation. Very well said, Barrister Edwin. Uh, thank you for that intervention. Uh, when we're talking about the heroes of uh, June 12, the story will be incomplete without the mention of the role played by the Afeni Ferre and the Nadeko chieftains, the likes of Pa Ajasi, Afre Ruane, uh, and, and the, the, the list goes on and on. So, so tell me, how would you rate the participation or the involvement of Nadeko and Afeni Ferre in the fight for uh, uh, June 12? Well, Nadeko 
Now they could do what they had to do at the time. They brought intensity to the struggle and they made sure that the struggle did not die. They are more or less like the force that sustained the struggle until the people began to know that very well. Although is a tribal, but you see, that's what we must understand. You see, when a tribe look beyond and look at what they are saying. Afeni Fere is a tribal organization for the Yoruba people, but they were speaking for Nigeria because June, the election which Abiola clearly won was a detribalized election. It was an election that Nigerians spoke with one voice. So it had nothing to do with who is Yoruba, who is Hausa, who is Niger Delta, who is where. So Afeni Fere and then Adeko championed the cause to ensure that the truth stands in the interest of this nation. And they did phenomenally well. And a lot of them also, uh, you know, paid the very great prices. You know, some of them, you know, lost their lives in the system. They may not be as prominent as Abiola, Kudrat, Abiola, and uh, others that have been mentioned uh, uh, in this conversation. But most of them lost jobs. Most of them went down, you know, uh, uh, you know they went into hiding because uh, the state agents were looking for them. But you see, because they did all that they needed to do, it was... Uh, you know, what sustained the struggle. So I commend Nadeko, and I, I will that they to be recognized. My submission is that those who played prominent role over June 12, Nadeko, Afeni Ferry, and other groups should be recognized somehow. That's the only way. And then not only that, the lessons of June 12 must be amplified. It must be put on the front burner to, you know, engineer a conversation that will re-engineer uh, uh, the political landscape of this nation. Because I, I still have my doubts if uh, the price that this will pay has gone down, you know, with Nigerians and if we have taken anything home, the deliverables of this particular struggle, whether we are benefiting from it uh, today. So, Afeni Fere did phenomenally well. Nadeko did wonderfully well and several other splinter groups. So I commend their effort. And today, I celebrate Nigerians. I celebrate this nation that eventually the truth has come to the fore. What remains to be seen is how we can benefit from this going forward in the politics of this nation. Uh, thanks for your opening remarks on the program this morning. We'll come back to you very shortly. Let's speak with our comrade Joseph Eva right here in Lagos Studio for a bit. Uh, before we return to uh, Port Harcourt. Uh, now, Barrister, you're still in line with what uh, my colleague asked him, uh, but let me take a look at the significance of uh, what the roles the heroes played. Uh, a few names were mentioned, but permit me to mention some other names. Uh, uh, David mentioned um, uh, Alfred Wane, per Alfred Wane, and um, Adekunle Ajassin, the late chief Adekunle Ajassin, but we also have the late chief Anthony Enahoro, uh, Chief Franco Kori, Gani Fawaimi, uh, Wally Shwinka, and many more. Some of their names are on the dailies today. In fact, um, uh, Wally Shwinka is quoted to have said that today is a democracy day primer. Now, do you think we would ever know uh, the significance of the roles these people played uh, to ensure that we are enjoying democracy today? Yes, um, and I've seen some evidence, especially uh, the honor given to uh, my own leaders that were in the struggle uh, by the Southwest, uh, especially when Inaru died, when Pai Inaru died, the honor, he was given state burial. Uh, although he was not given state burial uh, by the federal government, yeah. we expected a state burial by the federal government because Inaru was the person that moved the motion for Nigeria independence. Even with that alone, Inaru uh, we expected the federal government to give him a state barrier. But uh, I don't know, maybe because of the government that was in place when he died. But we thank the legal state government, in particular, at that time, and the Southwest leaders, because uh, Painaro was giving national barrier. I was one of his personal assistants during the Nadeko mm. Wala of running around. 
even when we are not comfortable with what uh, former President Basinger was doing, he now mobilized us for us to come up with our own pronaco constitution. He was, he was a leader. We are coming, our people are coming from Port Harcourt. Asare and Q and some other leaders, uh, my brother Uranta, we were, the Niger Delta people were ready for that pronaco constitution. We say this Nigeria constitution given to us by military young, these military people. We have been causing trouble, this and that. So we want a constitution by the people of Nigeria. So we came up with Pronaco constitution. So mm. when Inaro died, he was given a befitting burial by the Southwest. Not only that, uh, my leader, like Rwani, uh, Chief uh, Alfred Rwani, uh, in Lagos State here, they give him a, in fact, the Southwest, they, they recognize what he did. But maybe because of the, those who are at the federal, the center that time, he was... Uh, um, uh, was not given that national, they are, these are nationalists these are nationalists they are not Yoruba people but they believe that we have to, anything that happened to any other tribe, we should all mobilize yeah. against it, so people like uh, my leader Kokori you know the southwest, they are still uh, appreciating what he has done. so like what the last week has uh, talked about, other people, these elders the elder statement, forget about we young uh, people at that time we were just PA running around and uh, throwing stone, mobilizing to make sure that road safety. I want to thank the masses. Look, the masses, the real thing that made Nigeria everywhere was shaking because the masses, they say, no, no movement of vehicle, no movement of vehicle, no movement of vehicle. The market women, all market closed. Civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is not for anarchy, like the violence that took place in K2. The areas that I was coordinating, or asking the job people or Niger Delta people to come out from Ekpe and the Toki and the Kurudu area or uh, Okokomaiko area to uh, mobilize and carry placard to show that it is so that when journalists, foreign journalists come to any crowd and say, hey, yes, what do you have to say about June 12? What we don't want only Yoruba people to be talking. We want other tribes to be involved in the interview. So that they, because the military government at that time want to give us, give the international community the coloration that this is a Yoruba uh, problem. We said this is not a Yoruba problem. This is not a Yoruba problem. Was it only Yoruba people that voted? So when a BBC person interview uh, a job person speaking, he talking or uh, they know that this matter is not only a Yoruba problem. That was the tactics we also used to confront the situation at that time. So the masses, the uh, road transport workers, especially the road transport workers that make movements completely crumble. Mm. The uh, civil servants, people were on strike. The oil workers, the civil disobedience was what made the military to know that. This annulment is a big mistake, but you know, uniform men, they want to show that they are superior. So they continue to resist. They resist the demand until uh, later Abacha died, Abiola died, and uh, we have to Come to a new face. Very well said. Um, we have just been joined in our Buja studio by um, Gide Ojo, who is um, a social commentator, political analyst, and uh, many more um, cap to his uh, titles there. Gide, welcome to a uh, special edition of News Up and happy Democracy Day. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Yes, we are discussing the heroes of June 12, and we had mentioned quite a few names uh, that uh, were key players in, in the struggle for the actualization of June 12. We had mentioned quite some names, but there are a few other names that had not been mentioned, the likes of um, Ghani, Fawa, Emi, um, uh, Falano, uh, just name them. But we can't also underlook or rather overlook the the roles played by the by nuns talking about the national association of nigerian students yes students were very key players in this fight for uh, the the for for the uh, for the return uh, of for against the annulment of june 12 so tell us how would you rate how would you rate the performance uh, of um, the student union in the fight uh, against the annulment of june 12 uh, thanks very much for that question, uh, David. You recall that you and I, uh, as students of the University of Lagos, also participated in the, the annulment uh, protests of June 12. 
uh, while we were in Unilag. Uh, the students' movement played a very key role. Uh, the Yaba Axis, um, down to Ebutemeta Oyibo, uh, Bariga, all of that. Students from University of Lagos, from Yaba Tech, and, and even across the uh, Southwest, and indeed, uh, even uh, ABU, Unijaws, many of them were part of the June 12th struggle. And uh, we, we, we played our own little role. Uh, you recall that as a result of this mass uh, protest by students um, of tertiary institutions, uh, many schools were shut down indefinitely uh, in the Southwest, uh, where the heat was most felt. And uh, when uh, 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 many lives were also lost, many of the lives that were lost were those of also students, uh, many of them unsung, unknown, uh, unidentified, who were part of the June 12th struggle. Then, National Association of Nigerian Students is not as polarized as we, what we have here. Uh, this, the National Association of Nigerian Students then, uh, I, I've forgotten the name of the NANS president as at that time, but I think. Uh, in Unilag, we have uh, Shegun Mayogun or uh, Shewore, if not Shegun, either Shewore or Shegun Mayogun, was our uh, uh, Unilag uh, Student Union you know, president. And uh, they, did their, they did their utmost best to mobilize the student community to be part of the June 12th struggle. But beyond that, the role of media in what June 12th struggle came to be cannot be overemphasized. Look at, Abiola himself was a, was a media mogul. He was the owner or the founder of uh, Concord Newspapers, Punch Newspapers, um, Guardian Newspapers, The News, and several other news media were shut down or proscribed as a result of their, uh, you know, involvement in the actualization of June 12. Um, I've started my uh, commentary writing uh, way back in 1990, and I knew um, many of the very acerbic and critical commentaries uh, were, were not allowed to be published in mainstream um, government-owned newspapers. Uh, but in spite of that, in spite of the proscription, uh, of many newspapers then. Uh, they, 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 they still published underground. Many of them still find a way of uh, uh, publishing through uh, the, the, the black market or what I call the gorilla uh, way. Uh, you st so you have the news magazine, the news watch, and uh, a host of others. In fact, the Guardian newspaper was taught by unknown arsonists as a result of uh, uh, their participation in the actualization of June 12, and the pub, the founder, uh, the publisher of June 12 of uh, of the Guardian, uh, don't forget um, uh, Alex Ibru, then Minister of Internal Affairs uh, under the interim government, was shot, uh, and uh, only God saved him. He, he could have died on June 12. So the heroes of June 12 are so many. Students, labor community. Incidentally, I tried to uh, revisit the issue of June 12 in my column in the Punch of Today, uh, titled June 12 National Assembly and uh, Nigeria's Fourth Republic. Uh, it's there for anybody who wants to read, to, to do, because I, I deliberately try to chronicle the events of June 12 because uh, it's been some over 25 years now. Many of today's youth who are even in tertiary institutions do not know. Uh, they do not know what June 12 is all about. They do not know the significance of why um, many of us were rooting for the recognition of June 12 as our democracy day. And, and that's why I decided, look, I need to do an, uh, an epistle on this issue so that youth of today will know that our struggle for, uh, uh, for deepening of democracy is not something that started with uh, internet or social media. We have been involved in the struggle for the deepening of democracy even when there was no internet, when there were no computers. People were using different methods 
to ensure that uh, we have a, a, a democratic culture entrenched in Nigeria. All right, Judy, thanks for your opening remarks. Uh, let's get back to Barista, uh, our barista in uh, Port Harcourt studio, Barista Edwin. All right, so we have heard of some names of some heroes and heroines of uh, the June 12, you know, uh, annulment or election. Uh, some names are unknown, but we still know that uh, some people really fought hard uh, for this <coughs> democracy. Now, these people who fought hard were of different tribes, ethnic and religious groups, but they were a formidable force. Now, do you see this kind of groups in Nigeria, do you think we have uh, this formidable force in Nigeria? Should we have a case of fighting uh, for tyranny, a government of tyranny in the future? Well, I, I, I think it's still possible to get that uh, Nigerian spirit that uh, enabled uh, June 12 uh, protests to become what it is today. And, and I'm, uh, I would to God that we have proper study of the phenomenon of June 12. You see, just like uh, the contributors from Abuja and uh, Lagos have said, June 12 is truly a national phenomenon. It was well organized. And, and, and the true heroes, apart from uh, Chief Emko Abiola, who stands as uh, the leading light for the struggle and others that have been mentioned, the true heroes of June 12, uh, you know, uh, protests, the Nigerian people, because just as was mentioned, NAS was involved, the road transport workers were involved. It was a total no to anarchy. It was a total no to improper governance, you know, as it were. You know, so it's the Nigerian people that galvanize themselves that June 12 shows the strength of organization, the strength of the truth when we believe in it, how far we can actually go against the oppressors of the system. So, uh, you know, we can actually go back to that. You know, we can go back to that if we take away the kind of politics that we are playing today and reinvent the, a people-driven politics. Now, that time, it was actually a people-driven politics that we are playing. That's why it was not a question of whether MKO was Yoruba or not, just like I ever mentioned. You know, it was a Nigerian thing. We were all Nigerians. We all voted freely. And it was declared the freest and fairest election in the history of this nation. So we need to have a June 12 Hall of Fame. Yes, a June 12 Hall of Fame where some of these people can be recognized and the role they played. And then an opportunity for our children to learn what June 12 really stands for. And in the process, reinvent our politics. What we have today in the front burner is a departure, a complete departure from what June 12 stands for. So I will, I, I will, I will, I will, you know, going forward say that yes, we can still have groups mobilized, just like the man from Abuja mentioned. At that time, NAS was not as divided as they are today, as polarized as they are today. But what is the reason for polarization? If you ask, a lot of the time, personal interests masquerading as public interest is what causes a polarization. When leaders begin to see what is there in. What is in there for me before they ask what is in there for the people? They now use the facade of fighting for the people and fight for personal interest. And some other person might be thinking differently. But June 12 was a departure from the politics of self. It was a politics of all of us as a nation. And all of us as a nation, we are delimited in groups. Political groups, civil society groups. So civil, civil disobedience has recognized internationally as a method for changing the social order. And it worked very, very well. Right now, we don't really have you know, groups that can insist that, look, let's have this policy of government change. Let's have our leaders think differently. We don't have them right now. But I still believe in this nation. I believe that if June 12 protests and all there is, the deliverables of June 12 are made a continuous conversation in schools in political gatherings, we can reinvent that Nigerian spirit. We can reinvent that Nigerian spirit, and what we have today can get better. Yes, democracy is about the people. The welfare of the people is the reason for governance. The welfare and security of the people is the reason for governance. Abiola stood for the welfare of Nigerians. He stood for the welfare of the whole Nigerians, Yoruba or not. So that's why some of us here 
We see him as a hero even before the federal government has, you know, done this proper thing by declaring June 12 as Democracy Day. So going forward, the deliverables of June 12 must be made sustained, you know, put in a place, remain in the front burner for com this conversation to continue so that Nigerians can benefit from it. These young persons that are coming up today do not really know anything about June 12. So they have to know. So I recommend a, a June 12 Hall of Fame. That will not be too much. That's the way to show that indeed there can be a Nigeria where the will of the people will triumph over the will of a few persons who are determined to oppress the larger majority. And democracy is about people, it's about, it's about a, a large number of people against the minority who want to oppress the system. So that's my take on that. Very well said, um, Barrister Ed Edwin. Um, uh, a good intervention there. Uh, the conversation will continue, but before then, let's listen to this report by our correspondent here in Lagos on the living heroes of June 12. Don't go away. Several groups and individuals played important roles before, during, and after the June 12, 1993 presidential election. In some cases, some suffered incarcerations, persecutions, and for some, they had to go on self-exile to fight the military government at that time. For this petite fighter, Joe Keodumaki, who had kept the memory of this struggle more than two decades on, the mandate was worth the pains. I knew I was shot on my left leg and I, I never had the opportunity of going to the hospital where we ran into the bush that we were treated the day I came out after spending three days with somebody that I just ran into who had a transition ritual that said, who are you? And I spoke an Angola freedom fighter. In a view, despite the recognition by the federal government of June 12 as Democracy Day, the essence of the struggle is not yet fully actualized. I think people always tell us that you people won't, aren't you satisfied? And I said, with well, what we have done, I think the, all the accolades should go to the masses of this country. While the battle was being fought from the side of civil society groups, the media was not left out in their guerrilla style of journalism. A frontliner from the fourth estate of the REM is the publisher of the news, Bayo Nonuga, who explained to me that it was not driven by ethnic affiliation, but by the course of justice and fairness. By the stage in this organization in 1998, about uh, 13 members of staff were arrested and detained for months at Alagbon. Those are the things we, we had most of the time for about five years, many of us could not sleep at home. Uh, you could not sleep with your wives because you're always afraid that uh, that somebody is following you and things like that. And in my own case, in 1997 December, I eventually, I, I eventually had to leave the country to go on exile. The fierceness of the military and continued man on for him and some of his colleagues, fired them up to engage in some fearless and damning but factual reports. He recounted that the gesture shown by President Muhammadu Buhari is a proof that there is reward for resilience and consistency for truth. These are but a few of men and women who in some cases paid the ultimate price for the course of June 12, 1993 presidential election. Okay, welcome back. We are still discussing heroes of June 12 um, here on Silver Bay Television. We still have in our studio, Lego studio, um, Comrade Evans, Joseph Evans. Uh, jo Comrade, quickly, um, I haven't listened to our Buja and Botaka studio. Uh, the conversation tilted to the fact that um, there was a common enemy at that point in time, which obviously was one of the reasons for the success of the June 12th struggle. Everybody had one focus. Yes, you agree with that? Yes. Uh, but today, it seems like um, there is uh, an array of enemies. So uh, the target, they have too many targets. That's why it seems like it's difficult for us to have such a um, coercive um, struggle in our today democracy. Would you agree with that? Um, 
Uh, no, I, I like uh, the question she asked uh, one of my brothers that uh, do we see if something, if somebody want to terrorize this country now? Do we still have uh, Do we still have the structures? The structures are there. The structures are there. The structures will come out. God has a way of doing it. This ugly type of thing tried uh, to raise his head around the uh, transfer of power from um, Yaradua to Jonathan. Some forces again came up, said we should not allow the vice president to take over. Even within the Federal Executive Council, the late uh, Dora Akwinle, uh, 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 may her soul rest in peace. She stood up and challenged uh, uh, Barisa Adwaka, or uh, what is it, Adwaka Kaka? Adwaka. She challenged him, what are you talking about? Look at the country. You want to manipulate something here? And the whole nation. In fact, people were writing full page adverts. I saw the publications of people like Tinibu. I saw the publications of people like um, Atiku. All these are even friends of the late Yaradua. But they are saying that this is wrong. We have a vice president. Hand over the power to this vice president. Where is the letter that the late Yaradua wrote that he's not capable of handling this country? Before you know, same Nigeria group came out from Pam. Wale Soinka was lead. Elderly people. The late Bri uh, uh, Tunde, uh, Tunde uh, uh, Britwin. So people, the moment people, ah, this young, the few people want to cause confusion and make our children suffer, cause crisis in this country. Where are these people? People will come out and say, my friend, sit down. Don't create problem for us. So the moment, like I want to hail the people of uh, Imo State. Just an example. Somebody just wake up and say, I want to make my uh, son-in-law a governor. They say, what is this man doing? What is this man doing? Where is he? This state that is housing even the Arara declaration. These governors, they don't read history. If you know what are, uh, the embassy people, the, the Arara declaration, the whole Igbo nation gathered there, made a declaration that even the heavens echoed. A small boy just wake up and said, I want to make this one governor. Then the people will allow you. They will stand up. People who are sleeping will just say, what is he talking about? Because we're making governor. These are the type of things. There is a spirit. So the moment somebody wants to do that, God will start raising people. God will just wake up people from their sleep and say, come, 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 come. These ones want to cause problems for your children, children yet on board. Oh yeah, stand up and take. That was how this country was saved during the time of the late Yaradua, Yaradua was a peaceful man, very humble man. He's not there, he's not a power drunk. Some young people around will be causing that problem. And God raised people like Wale Soinka and others, Femi Falano and others, you know, civil society. They stood. Before you know, the civil society was warning the military don't engineer crisis and take over the government. Any military takeover, it happened just yesterday when, before uh, Jonathan took over as acting president. So, I believe that these forces are there and everybody is watching. In Nigeria now, the attention of whatever you move, you, the, whatever move a leader make, they read. Meaning to it and say, what is he saying? What is he doing? I believe it's the person. All right. Great yeah. one there. Uh, let's talk to Jide Ojo in Abuja studio. Uh, Jide, we've talked about the heroes and heroines of this June 12 um, uh, election. But one thing that is quite unclear is if this democracy, which is 20 years already, uh, if this is what uh, the freedom fighters like Joe Duma King really fought for, is this the democracy we should be having at this <coughs> point in time in Nigeria, the way it is? Of course not. Uh, of course not. But before I respond to your questions, we must not also forget the contributions of someone like uh, Dr. late Dr. Taisholani, uh, and uh, and uh, Kunle Ajibade, who was jailed for life, and several other uh, pro-democracy activists um, that, that fought for the denullification of June 12th. Um, coming back to your question, again, I refer you to my article in the Punch of Today, where I try to extract 20 years of this fourth republic. Because um, when you look at the situation of Nigeria in this fourth republic, it is so, so this acne and, and art trending that we didn't meet any of the 8 million development goals. We are not likely going to beat any of the 17 sustainable development goals. The rate of insecurity in this country is so alarming. 
Nigeria is about the headquarters of kidnapping in the world. We are one of the uh, people who are still causing pain globally in terms of polio. Uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, and Nigeria are the pain countries. Just how many days ago, we still hear of polio mellitus, you know, uh, virus being discovered in uh, some of the northern states, including uh, uh, exporting it to a part of Cameroon. That is, that is the situation. Just yesterday, ASU is calling on government to salvage the education sector and the health sector of this country. What is the state of our infrastructure? What is the state of our economy? What is the state of our security? What is the state of even our human rights observation? So when you look at all of this, I will not say it is the APC government of Buhari that is the culprit in, in all of this. It's a cumulation of successive administration who has not been able to deliver on their campaign promises to redeem the country from quagmire. And in my closing remark in the, in, in, in the article that I'm referencing, I did call for restructuring of Nigeria for better governance. Because if we fail to restructure, we will still be talking about this next year when Nigeria shall attain 60 years of independence. What have we to show for being giant of Africa? The ease of doing business is still more of a rhetoric. People who want to set up small, medium uh, enterprises are, are not having it easy. There is no single digit loan. There is no uh, infrastructure. The cost of doing business is still very astronomic. Many people are committing suicides today because they cannot actualize their, their, their dreams and aspirations. So we are far, far from where we ought to be 60 or 59 years after independence, 20 years into this fourth democracy. The only thing we have to celebrate is that we have had six successive elections. We have not been able to uh, fail to have general elections as at when due. But what is the nature and character of the crop of leaders that our elections have produced over the years? Is it not this caliber of people that buy their way into electoral success? People who inflict pains and violence on the electorate because they want victory at all costs at elections? We saw what panned out at the six general elections that was held between February and March 2019, where people were intimidated where people's choices were manipulated, that is the rationale why you see INEC withholding certificate of return of some of the winners of that election because they played, they, they failed to play by the rule. Let Claudake, God bless his memory, who is also one of the activists of June 12, said in his classical essay that Nigeria is running the pity journey. We are having democracy without democrats. People do not have democratic tenets. People who, wants, who, who are managers of our political processes, who would rather not have election, whether internal election or, or, or general election, who yet want automatic ticket because they can't stand the election, who would rather buy their way to victory. Is that the kind of leaders that will solve our national challenges? You, you, we, we are far from, we are, we are far from the, the ideal. I, 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 I am very pessimistic. Look at even our anti-corruption fight. It's still like the cosmetics. It's still like the cosmetics. The rule, the law is for the enemy, the exemption is for the friends. You know, we are still uh, uh, aspiring to even have democracy because many of us believe what we currently experience is civil rule. Civil rule, not democracy, because in a democratic talk, uh, in a democratic environment, rule of law prevails, and that's part of my advocacy today. That we need to observe rule of law, not in breach. We need to ob observe it like in the motto of University of Lagos: in truth and in deed. We need to observe it. Constitutionalism, that's supremacy of the constitution. What do we do? at state level, at local level, at federal level? How do we uphold the integrity of our national constitution? Do we obey it? We have in this country a, 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 a inspector general of police that is talking about court judgment being declaratory and not uh, mandatory. 
people who cherry pick which court judgment to, to obey and not to obey, people who, 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 who have institutionalized culture of impunity. So much so that, you know, they, 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 they get away with whatever crimes they, 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 they commit. And that is not how to deepen democracy. And that is my worry, that we are, we are sacrificing rule of law at the altar of impunity. If you, you see a party leader saying, once you join our party, your sins are forgiven, you can do whatever you like. We heard of uh, rumors of money exchanging land because of just National Assembly elections. We don't know how far that is true. Some are insinuating that dollars were, were changing hands. Some were talking of 25 million changing hands because somebody wants to become either Senate President or Speaker of House of Assembly. Is that what we bargained for when we were struggling for the actualization of June 12? What is the nature and character of our party system today? Party system that is largely monetized, where youth, women, and persons with disability cannot be said to be included in the electoral process. Today, we, 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 we have electoral process that is meant for muddy bags. That is not how to, how to deepen democracy. That is not how to ensure that the ideas of June 12. I like what my brother in Portacourt was saying, that what are the lessons we are even learning from June 12? June 12 was a pan Nigerian mandate given to Abiola. Today, the only thing similar to what we have in June 12, which is also disputable, was what um, Erufa tried to do in Kaduna with this last governorship election, where he fielded a Muslim Muslim ticket, uh, himself and a, a lady from Southern Kaduna, both of whom are Muslim. But you know that election is still hardly being disputed at the tribunal. But can we have a national elections where there will be no ethnic balancing, where issue of quota, uh, look at our quota system, our federal character system, look at the policies of exclusion that is still being played. I was advocating that, look, if you are talking of inclusive governance, this National Assembly election should have been at least something that you ensure that each of the geopolitical zone have something to show and, and live on to as, as part of what, what, you know, policies of inclusion. That, okay, you cannot say you are zoning this, the, a particular ethnic group is having two out of, uh, uh, if you name number one to five for this government, the number one and the number two position and number four position is being occupied by a particular geopolitical zone, whereas we have other zones, other geopolitical zones who do not have representation. Even if it is for bragging rights, that is not how to play politics of inclusion. I believe that whatever the framers of our constitution is talking about, the issue of federal character, the issue of quota system, they are not saying that we should you, sacrifice you know, merit. We are not saying that there. we should not uh, be uh, mindful of the heterogeneous nature you, yeah, of Gideon Nigerian Gideon. politics. But yes, what we have today is politics of exclusion. Thank you for your intervention. Uh, so many that you 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 have you have broadened our our scope of conversation this morning, uh, but let's let's still stay with uh, the June 12 um, struggles, uh, the lessons and the heroes of June 12. Uh, let's go to Apotakot Studio where we still have uh, Barista Edwin. I'm um, still waiting. Yes, Barista Edwin. Interesting stuff, um, Julia. I just raised there. Uh, the question was, is this the June 12 that um, the likes of um, Abiola, Kudirat, Abiola, uh, Late Pa, Jassi, Kokori, and the likes. Is this the June 12 that they all fought for? Absolutely no. This is not the June 12 they fought for. You know, like uh, uh, Ojo said, Jiri Ojo said, absolutely we have not been able to get the deliverables from that struggle. And the men and women that laid their lives by Jassi and all of that, uh, for me, right now, we, we still have to go back to the drawing table to see exactly what they thought and the, the structures they put in place to achieve what they achieved. And uh, for me, we really need to, um, the only way we can deepen the democracy, like uh, uh, I took so much uh, from what uh, Ojo said, we have uh, democracy without Democrats. You know, on, across the political divide, we are, there are no Democrats. The will of the people is not triumphant. And then section uh, uh, 13 and 14 of the Constitution, you know, of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, provides that 
it is important that the government ensures the participation of the people in their governance. So how is that being done today? When a, 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 sim, a simple uh, minority, an insignificant minority, because of what they've got, are running the nation just the way they want. So this is not the June 12, this is not the nation that you know, the protagonists of June 12 look for. They look for a Nigeria that was detabalized. They look for a Nigeria where money is not the issue for you know, electoral office. You know, you want to context an election, you don't have to have all the money. You just need to have an ideal. And that ideal has to be people-driven ideal. An ideal that will move the people forward from one level of glory to the other. Because leadership is about people. Just as John Maxwell said, if you are a leader and no one is following, then you are not leading, you are just simply taking a walk. We need a Nigeria where leaders represent the desires, the will of the people. And that's what June 12 is all about. So the, if you research very, as everybody has agreed in the conversation, that June 12 was a national phenomenon. It was not a Yoruba thing. Thank God Abiola comes from a, an ethnic group, but it was a national phenomenon. We need that kind of country. We want that kind of country again. So that, like the last time I had, I got involved in a discussion about this, you know, with, with in my PhD, we talked about resource control and, uh, uh, you know, resource governance. If you put that together, you will be able to achieve the result that we need as a nation. And Abiola was coming to drive away poverty, at least to some extent, and then to unite this nation. We need that uniting force. Where the road transport workers spoke with one voice with lawyers, and I salute the courage of Chief Ganifa and me. After we lost him, we are yet to regain, we are yet to get somebody like him again in this nation. Chief Ganifa and me fought for democracy through the courts. You know, like uh, Ojo mentioned, we have a system where, even with due respect, some well respected lawyers, senior advocates of Nigeria, we criticize the Supreme Court after the Supreme Court has given a verdict. It's, 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 it's not known. It's not, it's not known to our system. But Ganifa, I mean, if he disagreed with anything, he went to court. He visited most of the prisons in purely from altruistic point of view. We don't have such men. We salute Femi Fanana also. He did his bid. But today, we have people who were social critics, who have uh, made a transition to become spokesmen of government, to the extent that a senior advocate of Nigeria can even say you don't need a certificate to govern well. And for me, this is sad. This is not the Nigeria that the, those who, even my brother Eva, who is there in the studio with you, he participated effectively also at his level. And this is not the Nigeria they were looking for. And so I, we ask, I ask with every sense of responsibility that we begin to distill appropriately the lessons of June 12 and allow it govern our politics. If we do that, in a very short time, we'll come out from the woods. This country is blessed with men and material resources. This country is loved by God. We can still reinvent a Nigeria that will be truly the giant of Africa through proper politics to proper democratic governance. In other words, we must get Democrats to participate in democracy, not civilians who are acting that they are Democrats. Meanwhile, on their own, they are autocratic. If you hear some party chairman talk about what their party is doing, you just imagine where exactly are we coming from and where are we going to. You are speaking for a group, you make it look like you are talking from your bedroom as from your family, no one to consult. It doesn't work Jonathan, that way. Thank you so much for that. It doesn't work that uh, way. We might just come back to the you reason? if time permits us to do so. But let's talk some more with uh, Comrade you. Eva right here in Lagos. Now, Comrade, the first, your opening statement on the program was that uh, with the president making June 12 the new democracy day uh, brings an end to the anger, so to speak, of the annulment of the June, uh, June 1993 elections. But from what has been said so far, uh, it, Nigeria has emerged, you know, both in a positive and in a negative way. Uh, for example, the system of election 26 years after 1993 is quite different. In 1993, uh, what we saw was um, the A4 option, 
But what we did, at least recently, most recently in the last election, wasn't A4, was of course different from what was obtainable in 1993. Now, the way Nigerians voted in 1993 was also quite different uh, from this, um, this year's election. Uh, we saw a massive crowd, you know, uh, vote for the candidates of their choice. The similarity was that in 1993 we had two candidates, just like we had here. We had Tofa and MK Abiola. And in this election, we also had two candidates. But something was predominant, votes buying amongst other uh, uh, manipulations that went on. Now, we are still looking at the heroes of uh, the June 12, 1993 uh, election. Uh, there was something uh, Barrister Jonathan talked about. He said he talked about national phenomenon. Now, do you think we can have a person, a Nigerian, that holds uh, such authority, such power, or that represents a national phenomenon that Nigerians would want to vote for without thinking of vote buying? Yes, it's possible, but there are, this vote buying now is coming up now as a culture. Uh, it is the politicians. We thought that INEC would be arresting and uh, with the type of money they had from the international community, apart from Nigeria budget for them, the international community. I thought they would video have video clips of this vote buying and display these people and embarrass them and show to the world that INEC is not just to conduct election but to give credibility to that election. Now, the spirit of vote buying now is now like a culture of uh, African culture, the real African culture. You want to eat Amala, you use your hand to eat Amala. Forget about the, all these cutleries and all this. No. It is a culture, a way of life. The vote by now is becoming a way of life. And there is nobody uh, facing trial. Over vote buying matter. Nobody is facing trial. There were uh, uh, the Ekiti elections, the Oshun elections. We saw a lot of uh, uh, videos, uh, social media, uh, that people display the vote buying. But nobody is going to court. So I don't know whether there is now a new law given to INEC that vote buying is part of our way of life. With this vote buying culture that is now on ground, we have a long way to go. All right. Yes. This vote buying now has become a culture because nobody is facing trial. Nobody is facing trial for bribing people. Nobody is facing trial for giving out money. And so people are now just doing it and uh, those who are doing it are also the same people who are in government. They are using, uh, some people use uh, 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 shoppers to carry dollars to a particular election. These things, we saw them in social media. Why there is no prosecution of these people? I think it is the media again that will help us. Just like the way the media help us, help this country during the uh, uh, June 12th struggle. Because all these things we are talking about, like what uh, Mr. Onanuga, uh, the former editor of uh, uh, the Nation newspaper and all that, this, the media faced a lot of threat during the June 12th struggle. But the media was the only voice mm. that you can use to express yourself. Mm. So now the media should come out again to save us from vote buying. If we don't have this, if we don't stop it, there is no symbol you can present to Nigerians and say, Oh, without vote buying, you can win election. Now we have all accepted indirectly, like uh, unwritten law, that if you don't have money, you cannot contest election. Okay. You know what I mean, you cannot stand for election. You cannot, you cannot present yourself as a candidate. Now it has become also part of a culture. Comedy. And it's unfortunate. Comedy Evans, thank you so very much for coming on the show. Thank you for talking with us. You've been with us since about 7.30. We sincerely appreciate that. And this is Conrad Evans. He's a, an activist, social activist. And um, in our Abuja studio, Gide Ojo, thank you so very much for talking to us. And Barrister Edwin, Edwin Jonathan, uh, in our Potaka studio. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show. We appreciate this. We say to all of you, happy democracy day. And we want to believe that the positions that you have 
actually elucidated today. <laughs> it's been listened to, and uh, we hope that uh, we're looking forward to a better Nigeria. We're looking forward to hoping that uh, we would have um, the dividends of um, the, 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 the reason for the June 12th struggle would materialize in our existence. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the show. Uh, we'll take a break now when we come back. The conversation will continue. Don't go away. <laughs>